in previous session we looked at pv and pvcs however who is going to create and manage all these pvs it's going to be very challenging right somebody has to administer all the creation and management of persistent volumes in kubernetes there are two types of provisioning supported one is static and another one is dynamic in static administrator creates pvs and allows them to use by consumers any request by pvc the kubernetes cluster is going to do the best match and combine the pv claim with pv once one pv claim is fulfilled by a pv that pv is not going to get used by any other claims so that's how the static provisioning works however we need something dynamic where pvs are created dynamically that is the concept which we are going to look into this session dynamic provisioning allows storage to be created on demand as per the request for the size that is requested and your persistent volume claim is fulfilled by creating pv on demand so all other fundamental remain same once a claim is fulfilled by a pv that pv is never going to get used anywhere else this dynamic provisioning is called storage class storage class helps with creating dynamic on demand persistent volume and it acts as a template to create new persistent volumes so let's see i have my node pod is running on a node and container is inside a pod i have a storage class which acts as a template for creating persistent volumes i have a persistent volume claim which is going to refer to this storage class in its definition when it is requested kubernetes cluster is going to create a pv for the requested storage class and it is going to get bound to my pvc once it is available volumes are mounted inside my container so that's how my dynamic provisioning or storage class works let's look at the storage class descriptor yaml one of the important part in storage class descriptor yaml is provisioner this provisioner is google cloud engine provisioner and this provisioners are provided by the cloud service providers this cloud service provider is implementing the container storage interface specification to integrate the cloud specific storage with kubernetes cluster cloud service provider has many parameters which are specific to the provisioners which are cloud specific so if i go to this url i can see all the storage classes available there are many storage classes available if you look at aws azure then gce and all let's look at aws example in this aws example i say i am having this aws ebs provisioner now if i look at the type here there are many types of storage classes available and i can decide which one i want to use for my storage class that i am creating i can say all my disk to be created in specific zone i can specify the zone as well i can decide if i want to encrypt my disk if you look at gce specification it also has a type which says standard ssd and all that and default is standard zone can be specified and file system type also is possible so that's how you create your storage class descriptor based on all your available information from the cloud service provider once you define this this is available for anyone to use to create their persistent volumes let's look at the how we can use the storage class in our persistent volume claim it's very simple you just have to match your storage class name in persistent volume claim with the name that you have given for your storage class 
and the PV is going to get created in Asia South 1A zone. The type of the PV or disc is going to be PD standard and size and all that information will be picked up from your claim. Let's look at the storage class demo. On my local machine, I have my Kubernetes cluster set up with three nodes here. To get my dynamic storage, I am using Longhorn. Longhorn is cloud native storage solution. So once I have got my Longhorn set up, I could just try and see what are my storage class available. So I have my storage class Longhorn available. I can do a port forwarding to see the front end of the Longhorn as well. So I have done the port forwarding for the Longhorn front end service. I go on the UI. I can see my volumes. I have three nodes. It is using the actual storage available on the node to make it available as a distributed storage solution. Let's look at our application quickly. So I have my PVC, which is referring to a storage class name Longhorn. I don't have any PV here. I just have a persistent volume claim. My pod is still same. I am running Nginx. Volume is going to be fulfilled by my PVC claim. So let's go and create the PVC first. So as soon as I create a PVC, you will see the difference. Say kubectl apply. So I am creating my PVC. So my PVC is created. It's in the pending state. If you notice PV got created immediately and this PVC is fulfilled by this PV. So you see the claim my PVC storage class is long on. Now, even though I have requested for only 300 MB, the minimum storage which is provided is 1 GB. So that's the capacity that I got allocated and that's what is showing up here. Now let me deploy my web server. So I'm deploying my web server. This web server is going to use this PVC to provide the storage. This my web server is scheduled on node KTS node 1. This is running. Let me just do a quick port forwarding for my pod. I'm running it on 8081. 8081, I go here. I don't have any files there. It's empty. Let's go and create one file there. So I'm going inside my web server because that's the only way I can go to the storage now. Okay, I'll go to the directory. So I've written one file here, index.html. Let's exit from here. Again, do the port forwarding. Go to the website here. See, this file is there now. So I can access that file. All looking good. My storage is provided dynamically by my storage class. Let's delete this pod and schedule it to another node and see that same PVC is used by the pod. So first let me delete it. CTL delete pod my web server. Now to not use the node one, I'll cordon the node. Now when I cordon, which means that no further pod to be scheduled on this KTS node 1. So if you see the status, it says schedule disabled. So it will go either to node 2 or node. Now the pod got scheduled on node 2. On node 2 also, this volume is available. And that's the beauty of Longhorn. It provides the storage similar to the storage in the cloud. So I have my web server running. Let me do the port forwarding. See, file is present there. Even though my pod is scheduled on another node, this is working fine. And that's how you can achieve the dynamic storage. This is exactly what you get when you are working on the cloud as well. Let's quickly see the Longhorn UI as well. You'll see that there is one volume created. Now let's try and see what happens if I delete my PVC. So first I'll delete my pod. 
Now notice what happens. My reclaim policy is delete. What happens if I delete my PVC? As soon as my PVC is terminating, my PV is also gone. And if I go to my long on UI, no volume. Volume is deleted permanently. So reclaim policy is important if you want to retain, if you are storing some data for database and all, make sure your reclaim policy is set to retain. So even though if you delete PVC, your actual physical volume will not get deleted from Longhorn and you can still uh, take a backup, snapshot, restore, whatever you want to do. Now that's all I had about the storage class. Now let's go to the exercise. In previous exercise, we created a PV with host path and all that. Now I want to use storage class with dynamic storage provided by Longhorn on my local machine and create my PV dynamically. 